everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable week to this point. Uh, here we are again, another segment of the Black Voice, um, where we address different issues, everything from the more in-depth scholarly explorations of topics and situations and historical elements as well as social and socioeconomic elements of the black thing to more uh, surface level discussions that impact us in some way or another. Today we're going to sit up and we're going to talk about this thing going on with Amanda Seals. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's hitting me up asking me uh, for my opinion on what's happening with her since the interview she's done uh, with uh, Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay and what's my take on it and everybody's split there are those that are saying they're standing with Amanda there are those that are saying that she's playing a victim card and uh, that everybody's against her is her battle cry and a bunch of other things and I'm going to give uh, an examination of what I've been able to actually observe. I'm not going to speak on anything beyond what I'm able to observe and I'm going to use it hopefully as a means of connecting it to more macro elements. It, uh, the way I see anytime we're looking at a celebrity, no matter how big the name is, and Amanda Seals isn't a huge name, but people know who she is, but no matter how big the name is, a celebrity is still a microcosm of a different and more larger uh, uh, situation or illustration of life. So their life and their behavior, if it can't not be observed in a way that connects it to a more macro issue that we all can relate to, it becomes inconsequential and just being nosy. So I, one of the reasons why it takes me so much time to get up to jump on these uh, trendy bandwagon is because I have no desire to get on the gossip side of things and I don't care less about being a celebrity news whatever but I do care about how their behavior and how we respond to it impacts us as well as what it says about us and who we are and how close we are to overcoming the things that we face uh how does it how is it applicable to the enigmatic issues we face within our community if if, if, if i can't make that connection if it doesn't move me enough to make that connection then i can't get on and with any real true um energy effort and passion uh, address it because I'm not really interested in celebrity. Now I am interested in mental health, I, uh, which I see here. I am interested in helping people who are on uh, the spectrum or who may be neurologically divergent. And that was some conversations from from what I was able to see about neurodivergency. Uh, or being neurodivergent, or being on the spectrum, whatever you want to call it, autism, um, and it's f constantly evolving uh, state, and also so many other things that we can see. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna delve off into it real quick, um, but I'm not going to just go all out into the gossip arena and talk and all this. But I'm gonna talk about how we tend to. Uh, create schisms with ourselves and how others are used to create schisms to where we become divided along hard lines that we battle on. Uh, and it happens with male, female. So it goes with some of our celebrities, some of the people who are supposed to be voices for our community get to beefing and we pick sides and it doesn't do anybody any good. We can talk about that. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you, hey, look, look in the uh, description box and look at how you can support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. For every word that I give you, I have done countless hours of research. I don't talk from an uneducated, uh, uninformed position. You may not like what I say, but understand that it is informed, that it comes from hours of research. The programs that we present and implement in our community comes from thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of research. Uh, the work we do in advocacy in school districts, the papers that I write that defend our move against certain behaviors and certain uh, activities within our community come from thousands upon hours of thousands upon thousands of hours of research. Uh, this work in the community has to be continued. This stuff has to be addressed. 
uh, actively, proactively, uh, on a scholarly level, on a political level, and we are doing all of these things and we need your support. Look in the description box. If you like what you see, like what you hear, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Okay, so uh, for some times, from for some time now, what I can gather is Amanda has been on somewhat of a down, downward spiral. There's been this thing where she has just had one run in after another, one person saying this about her, one person saying that about her. There have been a number of what, what I would call hit pieces. A hit piece is where a so-called uh, journalist uh, sits up and gets a bunch of information on her from different sources that they can quote that removes them from any form of libel or slander uh, accusations because they are quoting someone else and saying and, and saying allegedly along with it, they get away with it. But in these hit pieces, what they try to do is they try to create a persona uh, about a person that places them in a certain spectrum. This is often done when someone is being blacklisted. Now, I'm not saying that Amanda Seals is being blacklisted. I don't have enough evidence of that, but I do know that there's a hit piece. Uh, normally, hit pieces are done to shut people up. Uh, hit people, hit pieces are done when either two things and I, I want to be honest there are sometimes there's actually some excellent journalism going on and hit pieces don't start out as hit pieces they start out as investigative journalism where a person is actually looking into something or a complaint and they find this thing and it comes out that there's a certain person in there that is the nexus for a lot of bad things that are happening and then it comes out and it becomes this seemingly hit piece but it really started out as searching for true and then there's an actual hit piece which started out for the sole purpose of degrading, destroying, and marginalizing a particular person. Um, I don't have enough evidence to determine which is on this, but what I will speak on are the things that I can tell you based on my experience in the field of psychology, uh, in, the, in, the, in the field of sociology. I can tell you that anytime a person's battle cry is everybody is against me. I get a little concerned. Uh, because even when you look at Monique, even when you look at Cat Williams, they talked about the gatekeepers, but they also acknowledged that there were some people out there who held them down. There were some people who were on their side. There's some people that you can call and ask and they'll tell you. But when everybody is against you, one of the things I tell people who come to me, my clients that come to me and there's this long cascade of negative interactions and it is seemingly one person after another doing something wrong to them. I don't discount what the people did. I don't discount their version of what happened in the sense that they they believe that they've just been constantly bombarded with uh, negative behavior uh, towards them. What I remind them of out of the box is, is we've got to look, th look at this through a lens of re reality. And that lens of reality is this. You have X amount of years, X amount of situations that you have listed that th things have gone a certain way. This person's done this, this person's done this, this person's done this, uh, that business did this, this school did this. And, and you go down and you have to say, okay, what is the nexus? What is the one common denominator in all of this? And in our lives, and we go down our lives and we have this, uh, cascade of uh, things going wrong whether it's me and it's been I've had it in my life but where whether it's me or someone else and and I and I'm looking at it and I'm saying okay what's the common denominator I'm the common denominator does it mean that the things that happened to me didn't happen to me no it means that I'm playing some role because I'm the common denominator whether it's something as simple as putting myself in the place in a situation around people I shouldn't put myself in that allowed them to get to me is still a role I play because that's where I start to correct it it's by choosing better who I have surrounded me it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm totally reading it wrong and nothing's happened wrong to me it just means that I have some culpability now that culpability can scale sometimes they didn't do what I think I did. Sometimes it's actually me and I'm reading people wrong and I'm creating situations that don't exist. I'm getting people frustrated with me so they handle or talk to me a certain way because of how I'm handling and talking to them. And so we have to truly understand this part of it and then we can from that move on to the next stage. So 
I don't know enough about Amanda to say what's going on, but I can say that the red flags go up when I hear everybody is against me. And that may just be her embellishing her statement to make a point, or it could be how she really views things. And I don't have enough uh, to do that and I'm not gonna judge. Now, here's what I can tell you. What I, I see that concerns me is this gender war thing has women rallying for things without going. I told you about, uh, uh, God, what's the what's the woman's name? It'll come to me. The DA that everybody was on, she was, you know, Fanny Willis. Told you, don't jump on that bandwagon because it's gonna come back and it's gonna fall apart and it's gonna have you stranded somewhere. I told you how the Dems work. If a Dem has you out there attacking a powerful white Republican, they're gonna throw, have you throw all the stones, see if anything sticks. When it doesn't work, they're gonna throw you to the wolves and they are choosing you, understanding and knowing what your fallibilities are, knowing that there are some things under there so that they can dismiss you without cause and sit up there and they are not obligated to go to war for you because you shouldn't have been doing that, but they knew you did it. This is happening now. I mean, and, and, and that's the way the game is played on that level. People let you get away with stuff so that they can have something over you. We're seeing that right now with Diddy. They do that and then when you don't answer the bell when you're supposed to or you get big and you think you can move out on your own or they need somebody to throw to the wolves, guess who? It's going to be you, the one that has the least amount of value and may be the greatest threat depending on what. And they also allow you to be destroyed because they want to destroy your your credibility. So all this stuff that comes out about you, if you ever decide to say, hey, this is what's really going on and that these are where the bodies are buried, they set me up and they told me to do this, nobody's gonna believe you. You're just angry and bitter because you got caught. This is the way the game is played. And I've been trying to tell you, you when you read and research, you gotta put two things together, but they play on our emotions. And that's what's happening, I think, with this uh, Amanda Seals thing. I think it's more about emotions than really reading into it. And again, I have no desire to go out and attack anybody. And I want to be fair to her, but I also want to be unbiased in really evaluating it and talking about it because there are people out there dealing with real life issues, not maybe at the magnitude of the things she's talking about or the people she's talking about it with, you know, but at the same time, there are a bunch of people out there that feel like everybody's against them. And the truth is sometimes that's not the case. Now, in some instances, there are some people out there. And if everybody's against you, you either are on the cusp of really blowing up something big or you doing something grimy or you are really truly having a very overstated opinion of who you are and what's going on and you're just reading everybody wrong. Sometimes people are paranoid. Um, Sometimes people are sitting around and seeing things that aren't there and that's all you know, good until it destroys your life. What I tell people is, look at what's around you. I guarantee you, I don't care how many people are against you. I don't care what you've done in the past because I haven't been perfect. Um, when you make up in your mind, you want to do something with yourself. When you make up in your mind, you want to do something that's greater. When you want to make up in your mind that you want to go to something different, I don't care what it is, there's a way to do it. And you can do it without the people that don't like you. You can do it without the people. Even when you are ha being blackballed by some very powerful people, there's no such thing as it cannot be done. Now, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to make the sacrifices? Are you willing to develop new relationships? Are you willing to move out of the victim mindset? Are you willing to do some things other than sit up and and complain because here's the thing we like to complain to people that don't do anything and we don't do it at the uh we're not doing it on club shay shay but we're doing it on facebook we're doing it on twitter we're doing it on instagram we're talking about who did what we're talking about who don't like us we're talking about our haters we're talking about all these things constantly instead of saying okay who can i build with i'm not worried about my haters i give my haters no play i don't talk about who's wrong me i don't go on there saying this person wrongs me i sit up there and you know i might make a post hey look no matter what's going on in my life i'm standing up i'm moving 
moving on, I'm going on, but I'm not giving my haters, my players, and all this other stuff that runs through my mind, trying to point out something that'll distract me from what I need to be focused on, which is building. I cannot be focused on the negative and the destructive things that are happening and be building at the same time. And there are people out there that know that. And if you are a spiritual person, there are things of darkness that understand that. If you're a religious person, the enemy understands that. And so no matter where you're at, you got to understand there's a force out there that would love to distract you. And you've got to be able to focus on what's out there and what you can do. The easy thing is to complain, especially when you have a platform. I want to get us to a point to where we learn to love each other, learn to recognize each other, because it, it seems like all the people she has a beef with looks like her, you know, meaning black for, for those who may not get it, meaning black. And so we need to we need to deal with this. But you got to also understand is our uh, skin folk are not kin folk, that there are some black gate keepers of the gate. Matter of fact, everybody that Cat Williams name were black keepers of the black gatekeepers and so you got to understand yeah i get that but what you got to understand is move away from them move toward people who will build with you don't take a complaining spirit nobody likes a complaining spirit it is so hard to help somebody who all they want to do is complain because while your focus is on the negative you can't build there you can't heal there you can't grow there so you're going to have to get out of that and if that's all you want to do that will vex my spirit to the city look i know you've been through something I've been through something. The person on the other, other side of you been through something, but what are we going to do about it is the question. We have, as a people, been through something. What are we going to do about it? We, as a people, have been constantly under oppression. What are we going to do about it? We, as a people, have been constantly schemed against. What are we going to do about it? We, as a people, face mechanisms and machinations set up by a white racial caste system designed to keep us separated, divided, oppressed, and controlled. But what are we going to do about it? We're going to sit around and keep complaining. We're going to sit around and keep doing little. We got people doing tours. Making money off of us complaining about what we're going through instead of saying, let's come together, let's build, let's get behind something and let's find the people who know the answers, get behind them, let's start building. That's the whole thing. When it comes to our celebrities that we like and we really think that they, 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 they are talented, we really think that they provide a level of not only entertainment, but inspiration then we should be able to have something we can say, okay, Hollywood doing you like this, come here. The music industry is doing you like this, come here. Uh, we need, the comedy industry is doing you like that, come here. Whatever it is, and sit up and say, we got you, go out there and keep doing the quality work you're doing that is representative of our community, that shows us love and comes with respect, and we got you. That's what we should be doing. Instead of buying uh, Balenciaga and, and, and Gucci and Prada and, and Louis Vuitton and all that, we need to be sitting up and going, you know what, I'm gonna go out there uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna support this person. I'm gonna go out there and I'm going to start to try to build and collaborate with somebody. We're gonna create our own theater system. One thing I say about 50 and I don't know, and this isn't, co-signing who 50 is this is talking about somebody doing something outside about 50 has already built a studio in louisiana uh he's uh, a, a, a film a film studio in louisiana and now he's building one in houston where he lives now uh he brought it here and obviously i know why texas the, the tax laws alone is a great place there plus there's plenty of land and property i know rick Walsh has also bought a ranch out here what i'm saying is we need more people who aren't celebrities, but still have knowledge. Man, I talk to people all the time, and you got all these people talking knowledge, but they would rather just sit up there and compare the knowledge they got and sound good and kick it, and we'll smoke cigars, we'll have drinks, and we'll have all this conversation. Everybody get them go home. Nobody's doing anything together. The collaboration is what's going to change things. Until we get to the point where we stop beefing with each other, stop having these war, gender wars, these set uh uh, schismatic and sanct, uh, sanctum wars, uh, wars where we are divided, sectarian wars where we are divided and going at each other for different little spaces. And we start sitting up and saying, I don't care what we disagree upon. At the end of the day, we are a common target of a very powerful force. And the only way that we're going to stand up is to come together, put the bull crap aside, stop classism amongst ourselves, stop colorism amongst ourselves, stop genderism amongst ourselves and start sitting up and saying at the end of the day they after our black ass 
and start saying, now is the time that we're going to do something different. That's my take on it. So I'm out of here. Uh, as I said, if you like it, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. If you believe in the work that we've done, like I said, I've authored 28 books. I have created programs like Black Man Lead, uh, Music is Life for our children in the community. I have advocated with school districts. I have waged war with school districts on the disproportionality of special education referrals for young black males. Um, and on and on. That work still needs to be done and it's not free, but I keep pushing. I'm asking you to support the work we do. Look in the description box and give. On that note, I'm out of here, peace.